Hi everyone, my name is Ron Leite and welcome back to another Data in the Wild episode hosted by Data Mini. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel below and click the bell to turn on notifications to be the first to know every time we upload a new video. Today we'll continue talking about triggers in Google's app script. Now, in the last video we saw how installable triggers worked, and today we are going to see how we can use simple triggers and also how to set installable triggers inside our script. So here in Tools, Script Editor, we have our project, and now if I come here in Triggers, you see that I don't have anything yet. So if I come here in Editor, and inside the menu here, I wrote down some triggers so we can go over them. So simple triggers, those triggers need to be done inside the script. So we have the on open, on edit, on selection change, on install, do get and do post. On open works when you open the document like a spreadsheet, a forms, a google docs, something like that. On edit runs when you change a value and this is only applied to spreadsheets. On selection is when you go to a spreadsheet and change the selection. On install runs when you install an add-on for Google Docs, Sheets, Slides or Forms. And do get and do post are for Google websites when you use a HTTP get or post request. Now, if I run this, you see that the function oopen is already here, which is our menus. Now this on edit here. Whenever I type something in a cell, it will add a comment saying it was changed on and the new date here. It will also set the background to white. Why is that? On our on selection change, I added a function that will check if the cell is blank and then we'll change the background color to red. So if I click here on anything that doesn't have a value, you see that it's now red can just go and click whenever I want, it will automatically turn to red after a few seconds. And if I type something, you see that it goes back to white and also adds a comment saying when I change the cell here. Now I can just erase this and we click on something that's not here and then I can erase those notes right click it, erase notes but you can see that it goes to red every time I can mo select multiple cells here erase everything and it still goes red so this happens whenever I change selection on a blank cell and this whenever I type something on a cell now those three methods here I don't have an example for them but the most common one you ever find is the on open method but because as you could see the on select and change is kind of hard to trigger whenever you want because it goes and goes on every time you click on something and if you go too fast Google won't get what you're clicking on it has a time between clicks and also on edit will run whenever you type something so if there are a lot of people working on the document this can use a lot of your quotas so be sure to check what you're working on and mostly you'll be using on open and as you could see, none of those appears here in the trigger function. Now, let's go back to the editor and just comment this so they stop working. I'll just refresh my page here so I can erase those stuff without it printing everything again. Just click here. And then OK. Now I'll open my script again and we'll talk about installable triggers. So the installable triggers, as we saw, we can come here in triggers and add a trigger or we can come here in the code and use the script app new trigger where we'll be creating a trigger inside our script. Now those triggers we create here, we have to call our function. So we are calling send HTML mail, which is the function in this code here, send HTML mail. And also we have the send mail, which is being called down here. This function is time based every five minutes and then it will create the function. This one is also time based. 
it will run every Monday at 8 p 8 a.m. and we create it. If I run this here, like click here and then just save this, create time triggers and run, you see that it executed and if it's your first time running this, Google will ask for permissions, so allow the permissions so Google can create it. And if I come down here in triggers now, you see that I have two new triggers. I have one for send email, one for send HTML email, both are time based. If I come in this one, you see that it runs on Monday at 8 a.m. and the other one, it runs every five minutes. Now, I won't wait for this run because as you saw in the last video, after five minutes, it will run the workflow, it will show here the last run and it will type in here sent. Actually, I think it already worked, yeah. So it sent me the email here and if I refresh this, you see that it ran right now. But how can I erase my triggers? There are two ways. One is to add a script that will loop through your tr triggers and erase them. And the other way is to manually come here and just erase the trigger. Now, both methods work, but to erase your trigger by using a function, you need to get the trigger ID, which is kind of hard if you haven't saved it, like I didn't save it anywhere here. So you have to pass on the trigger ID to erase your trigger. The best way is mostly just coming here and raising the trigger you want. Like I can come here and delete forever. Also come here and delete forever. And then we have no more triggers. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that using triggers has some restrictions and they also affect the quota limits of your Google account. So if I come here in the documentation you can see those, this is the simple triggers documentation, you can see that it has the methods we talked about and now the restrictions. Important restrictions inside here. They do not run if the file is open in read-only mode, so if someone in your company or your colleague has only view or comment access, the script won't run. It cannot run for longer than 30 seconds, so if something that's taking too much time it won't be working correctly. They affect your quota limits, so if you click here you can check the quota limits for Google accounts, you have the free quotas and the workspace for Google accounts quotas. And there are also some limitations down here on where some scripts work or not, so on open works for sheets, slides, forms and docs, simple triggers, installable triggers, sheets, forms and docs. Edit is for only Google Sheets, select on changes only for Google Sheets, install is for sheets, slides, forms and docs, and so on. Get and post are only for Google websites or standalone apps. Also, if you come up here, in installable triggers, you can see some restrictions for installable triggers. They are very similar to the simple triggers restrictions. And you can check here some examples also on how to use the triggers. Also, if you have any errors in your triggers, as mentioned in the previous video, receive a notification saying that it has failed or something like that. So that's it for triggers in Google Zap Script. Thank you for watching and have a great day. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to know when future videos are posted. Thank you for watching.